going to be talking about the top five money mistakes that couples make. Coming up. Stay tuned. Welcome back to an all new edition of the Sunday Night Sit Down with America's number one money couple. I'm Tyler. And I'm Ty, and we're from hisandhermoney.com where we're managing money, marriage, and everything in between. The Sunday Night Sit Down is being brought to you by Audible. Love reading, but wish you had more time to get into your favorite books? What if you could use the time you already have and listen to the books you already love? Well, now you can with Audible. With Audible Books, you can be inspired, entertained, and educated anywhere, anytime. Choose from the bestsellers in self-development, business, nonfiction, and more. So what are you waiting for? Your first 30 days are free. Visit hisandhermoney.com forward slash audible to get started today. That's hisandhermoney.com forward slash audible. So like we said, we want to share five mistakes, the top five that is, that couples make when it comes to how they handle their finances in the hopes that if you find yourselves anywhere in this list, you will make the proper adjustments necessary because we want you guys to be successful not only in your money but in your marriage as well. We know that marriage is tough. We know that money is tough. And when you put those two things together, it can be an even tougher situation. And that's why Ty and I wanted to share this information Let me with just you. say this. It may be tough, but it is rewarding and beautiful, right? Agree. You definitely have your hard times, but it doesn't stay like that all of the time. It just means that it's, there's work to be done, right? So we wanted to showcase the top five money mistakes that you may be making. So maybe you can stop making those mistakes. So let's get to number one. The first mistake that we want to share with you is a lack of honesty. You must be completely transparent and honesty when it comes to your money inside of your marriage. Now, we know that finances is an emotional thing, right? When you have a lot of money in the bank, you feel good. When the funds are low in the accounts, you feel low yourself. And so we know that you know money isn't an easy thing to talk about, even inside a marriage between two spouses. But if you want to win, if you want to be that power couple, you must, you must be honest when it comes to your finances. And this is actually a mistake that we made prior to our marriage. See, we made it? I made it. Okay. I, mean, I Let's made it. Let's get that right. <laughs> this is actually a mistake that I yes, made. Yes, yes, own it. Before we got married, I was in a financially precarious situation because I had a bunch of debt to my name. And although I was in a position at that current time where I was thinking differently about money, handling money a little bit differently, all the mistakes that I made prior to led me to a bunch of debt. And I didn't want to share that with my soon to be wife because I was scared it would push her away and she wouldn't want to be with somebody that made those types of mistakes. So I did the wrong thing and I hid the truth about my situation and I said I had some debt but I didn't say how much debt I had I did everything I could to mask it while I was trying to secretly pay the debt off before we got married and it just didn't work out and it got to the place to where I had to tell the truth I had to come clean and I had to be completely honest that's right even though it was a mistake that you made I, I made. loved you through it right <laughs> that's right all right so number two is the lack of communication all too many times, couples are not talking about their finances. And I don't understand that if you should be creating a budget every single month, which will cause you to communicate. That's so important. A budget is a roadmap for your money. And as a couple, even the more you need a budget, right? So right. you can both stay in tune with what's going on in your household. So the best way to do that is a budget. And again, we have an ultimate great resource where we have a lot of students over there taking this course called teach me how to budget so if you need help planning your paycheck on purpose then you definitely want to check out that course the links will be in the description box below i mean think about it guys you're not going to get in your car in new york say hey kids we're going to go to disneyland right. in california let's just get in the car and go no, you're going to consult a map or you're right. going to plug it into your GPS system because you know to get to your destination that you have a desire to get to, you need direction. And that is what a budget is. And that's why it's so important for you guys to have communication on top of communication with your money. 
because too many cracks can leave holes and can leave leaks right. in your finances. And you look up and you get to the end of the month like, yo, where'd all the money mm-hmm. go? And that leads to friction. That leads to arguments. And that's why it's important for you guys to communicate and be on the same page with your money, even when it comes to how you talk and interact with it. The third mistake we want to share with you is a lack of accountability. Because we know that some of you all make the plans. You all, at the beginning of the month, you may even sit down and do right. the budget. You put it up, you put all the numbers in there, but then as the month begins to go, somebody's not following the plan. Or maybe both of you aren't mm-hmm. following the plan that you all set. And because there's nobody kind of tapping you on the shoulder and say, hey, you know, I thought we said we were going to do this. Or, hey, we're going to be moving in this direction. You continue to go off course. And that's why it's important for accountability to be present. For starters, you all should be accountable to each other. And that's the point of you guys coming together. Like we talked about honesty and communication. Now that you all have created a plan, it's important for you guys to hold each other accountable to that plan so that the plan can be executed and so that the benchmarks that you're trying to hit can be met. So somebody, look, it's not going to be the same person all the time, right? Because sometimes one spouse might be like gung-ho and on top of it and the other one might be a little lackadaisical. Then that spouse needs to come down and say, hey, let's, let's keep it. Let's keep in the fight. And the roles can reverse sometimes. But that's why you have each other to keep yourself accountable. And additionally, maybe you're in a situation where both of you all need some accountability. Well, we got you guys covered there, too. We have a free Facebook group called Smart Money Couples. If you go to smartmoneycouples.com, you can ask to join our group. And there's a community of people that will help you. Over 5,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stay accountable and stay on track to the things that you're trying to do with your money. That's right. Money mistake number four is lack of vision. Are you guys dreaming together? What are your plans? You know, the purpose of his and her money is not only to manage money, marriage, and everything in between, but we want to build power couples with purpose. What is your purpose within your marriage? Every couple should have that, right? Why are you getting out of debt? What are some of the things that you want to achieve? Do you want to open a business? Do you want to travel? What are your goals? All too many times, couples are in marriage and we're just paying the bills. We're just going through the motions, right? We're going to work, taking care of the kids, but we're not really living, right? What causes your eyes to light up? What causes that spark between you and your mate? What are you hoping for? Lack of vision is very, very key. Um, And probably one of the top, I would probably say out of the top five, this is probably the top one that I think that a lot of couples lack in. Let's start dreaming together, setting goals. Set goals, that's really important. We have a goal book, a journal that we've had for now, what, 12 years, right? We still have the same book. Set goals, it could be quarterly goals, annual goals, set goals. It's so good to see us go back through the years and through the pages. And we're like, oh my gosh, look at the goal that we set. And we did it. And we did it. We accomplished (laughs) it, right? And look at some of the ones that we're still working on. And we're going to accomplish those too uh, very soon or even eventually. But having vision within our marriage is really the lifeline of our marriage. Yeah, because without vision, you are going to make even more decisions that are improper in your present. When you have a vision like three years from now, we want to have this student loan knocked out. Five years from now, we want to be homeowners. When you have those visions, both of you have that in your eyesight. That affects the types of decisions that you make with your money today. But if you all don't even have dreams, goals, or aspirations like that, you're just like Ty said, you're just going day to day, just getting by, just surviving and not thriving. So we want you to be encouraged to have vision for your life, vision for your money, vision for your marriage, and that'll carry you to make better decisions with your money today. Mistake number five is a lack of boundaries. Listen. This is, this is particular to marriage because we've coached people and helped people out where they are in a situation where they're trying to get their own financial situation back on track, but they have family members on one side of the family who's always asking for money because it appears that this couple, you have it all together. And so other family members are like, yo, can you just help me out? Or I got this idea or I'm a little bit behind on this bill. And you feel compelled to help them because, hey, you know, you got to look out for We're family. family right? or this, you know, this has been my day one friend from day one. And so I got to have his back. I got to have her back. But the problem is by having these other people's backs, you're jeopardizing your own household. And it could be a case to where if it's one side of the family for one spouse, he or she feels the burden, right? And he or she just gives the money without considering the spouse or considering what's going on in our household. You have to have clearly defined boundaries that you both establish so that when situations arise like that, you already have answers and responses ready to go. That's right. Boundaries are so important within marriage. So set those boundaries. One of the boundaries that we have set forth in our marriage 
oh my gosh, at least for the past eight years, mm -hmm. is that we no longer loan out money. You know, we gave out money one time in our marriage and it was almost disastrous. Yeah. Uh, but we made that decision that, hey, the boundary that we're going to place within this marriage, we're not going to loan any money ever. And if we have to give money, it's because we're giving it and we don't expect it back in return. And so guess what? Our family, they know that. Our family and friends, they know that. And when they approach us, as a matter of fact, we don't get a lot of people to approach us. Not I think Because they know <laughs> they're not going to loan it to me. So how can I just ask them for it, you know? And so it, it helped keep our marriage even stronger, yeah, you know? Was a unified that, voice. Yeah, we were a unified voice. That's right. And that's something that we set forth in our marriage. So you need to make lists of what your standard boundaries are going to be within your marriage. And it's going to be helpful in the end. Question of the day. Which one of these mistakes have you made or are you currently making and what are you doing to fix it? We want to hear from you down in the comment section below. Or which one of the mistakes that we mentioned that you guys are already conquering in? We want to hear how are you are conquering in it and why and like what are some of the tips? What are helping you achieve that goal? All right, guys, we hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and also hit that notification uh, button. If you guys are subscribed to our channel, hit the notification button because a lot of people have been actually saying that they didn't even know that we were putting out videos what? it's not coming in their feed. So you have to hit that, no, little, that little bell, bell right? <laughs> Just to be notified. And if you're not part of our family, join us. We would what, love what to have you, you a part Why of our family. Why would you subscribe, That's people? Right. Let's go. Right, right? <laughs> and don't forget, check us out over at our website at hisandhermoney.com and meet us back here next Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time where you will see the both of us sharing with you. That's all we got for this time, guys. It's been great. Until next time. Peace. Bye.